All right, what's up everybody? We're gonna talk about maps today. More specifically, how to carry them. And what's the best way? And what's some advantages and disadvantages? So real quick, we'll go over each example I have here. This is not all examples. This might not even be the best examples. But uh, I am bringing them to you nonetheless. So first we have a little uh, wrist map carrier. This one's from Eagle Industries. It's called the Assaulter's Armband. And it's made to be worn on your arm, but it is uh, a pain in the ass, and I wouldn't recommend that. Nor do I find it's extremely useful. But yeah, here's what it looks like. Uh, you got this main map pocket right here, and then this little tiny middle portion, which is only about two inches wide. Um, next, we have a larger one. You're not going to fit this in your pocket or anything. Not without folding up and messing it up. But, you know, you can fit a... This is an 8x11, but you can fit a 9x12 map in here. Carry some pencils. Got a little bit more room for some more information. And then, uh, last but not least, my personal favorite, but also um, the largest, uh, biggest pain in the ass to carry, but also, in my opinion, the uh, most effective map board. You can make it yourself like I did, or you can get ripped off and pay Battleboard 450 some odd dollars for one of theirs. Uh, it's definitely not made out of duct tape like mine, but whatever. All right, let's break them down. So the first one, these little wrist ones, what are they good for? So some advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the advantages. Um, it's tiny, you know. Uh, you can put it on your wrist if you want to. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's effective. I just keep this in my uh, fighting load. So either in my fanny pack or in my actual kit. Uh, what are these good for? Well, they're good for a couple things. The big thing is is any type of uh, blown up map. Here I have a 1 by 10,000. Uh, this is good for stuff like that, GRGs. Um, blown up maps of the objective. So, you know, if you were... Any type of urban or compound that had, uh, you had building numbers, you could have a blown up area of the objective with the building numbers on it, with your TRP. So, you know, I mean, it's good for something like a weapon squad leader. Shift from building one to building 15 or TRP uh, one to TRP two, etc. So that's what this is good for. Uh, this little thing right here. This is not really good except for something like that. Something that's very blown up or some type of other quick reference guide. Uh, whatever that may be, whatever you would need, that's really up to you. Perhaps you could use this something for like frequencies, etc. I'm not going to go too much into speculation on what you could use it for. Uh, what this is not good for, obviously, any type of large map. Uh, yeah, if, if you need to carry a big map, if you've got a large area to work with, this isn't for you. It's not. I mean, that's the size. That's my hand. Uh, for reference, I'm 6'3", so hopefully that gives you some type of reference of size. But yeah, it's not very big. Um, if you try to put in here like a, the map I have in this thing, uh, 11 by 17, you're going to be folding it up and it's just not going to work right. Uh, the other thing is, is you're not plotting points on this. It just moves around way too much. It's not secured uh, on the inside. Yeah, it's just... It's for a reference. It's not really for plotting points. Um, it's not for none of that. Um, it's fairly cheap. I will say that. You can carry a pen in here. I don't because, like I said, I just use this for a, a reference. If I had to plot, I'm going to pull out one of these other two. Uh, fairly cheap. I got this in a pack of a bunch of other pouches for, like, I don't know, 30 bucks. So you could probably find that used for under $10 on eBay or something. Uh, next one, similar in concept, but it's a much bigger case, is uh, one of these. So a basically laminate map pocket, I suppose you could say. Um, what are these good for? Well, one, they're for good for bigger maps. Like I said, I got an eight by 11 in here, so if you print your own maps using CalTopo or something, that's what I do, these fit great in here. Uh, you got some other, you, you know, you got some more little pockets up here to put different data. I got like uh, my true north, magnetic north, some net frequencies, directions to some local repeaters. I was testing out some stuff with uh, directional antennas and stuff. Um, these are fairly um, 
waterproof. Now, if they get soaked, it's going to soak through the back. You can, te you can treat both of these with um, Scotch Guard or something, and it's going to help. But really, they're only, the only waterproof they have is for the front. And if the backs get wet, it's still going to get wet. Um, issues with this. Well, the biggest one is kind of with this one, not to the same extent, the map's not going to stay in place. Uh, that can be defeated, and we'll go into that in a second, but I try to shove it up here in this corner as far as I can get. And no matter what, you close this up, you open it up a few times, it's, it's moved. It's just the way it is. Now, you could use that as the reference and push the map up here in the corner, or what I like to also do is find an intersecting grid and mark it. So, like, this is 4, 8, and 8, 1. Four, or, I'm sorry, 4, 8, and 4, 4. So I would just find that grid, mark it on the outside of this, write the intersecting grid square, and I would line that up each time. Kind of a pain. Uh, sometimes you won't have to do it. Sometimes it'll just be lined up. But yeah, you're going to have to do that because it's still not going to stay put. That's why I have a problem with non-rigid map boards. Um, the other one is, if you don't erase your markings on here, it's going to become permanent. And I mean like permanent, permanent. Okay? Not use hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol to get it off. I mean like it's not coming out. Okay? Uh, I know this from experience because I can show you. I don't know where this grid is at. I'm going to assume somewhere in Colorado Springs because that's where I was last. But yeah, I wrote that on there probably a year and a half, two years ago. And it's still there because I forgot to erase it. And I pulled this thing out, I don't know, a month, two months ago to use it. Can't get it out. You just can't. It, hand sanitizer, rubbing alcohol, nothing gets it out. Uh, very packable. That's another pro of this. Very packable. I mean, this is great for an assault pack or something. You don't got a lot of room. You know, it's going to go anywhere. But like I said, you know, you're bending around and stuff. Your map's going to bend around. All right, let's go to the most useful but also the uh, most, the largest, the most size expensive. I don't know how you want to say it. Anyways, this is just plexiglass, two pieces of plexiglass um, taped on the outside using Gorilla Tape several times over, taped over here, and just held on with uh, clips. Now, is it 100% waterproof? No, no. Is it as waterproof as these? Mm, absolutely. The only place you got to worry about water getting in with these is in the seams. But if you're using these clips, it's going to hold it together pretty good. So, as you can see, if I kind of take it along here, it's pretty good. I mean, you could use a little bit more clips or maybe a little bit more tape, but it's much more rigid. This map is not going to move. I would still mark grid intersections just in case it shifts a little bit. But this is going to be way better for plotting your points. Um, you're not going to really have to worry about your map moving around too much, especially if you put a couple layers of tape on here and you get these clips and it's going to be a pain in the ass to get them on. It's really not going to move. So it's much more rigid, but that's also the downfall. Uh, you're not bending this like you are this and putting it in a pack. I mean, this is 11 by 17, so it's pretty much going in the back of my pack, sitting up against my back. That's really where it's going to go. But, uh, yeah, I mean... These are super versatile. Um, they make other products out there, Battleboard, you know. They have a couple products that aren't that expensive, around 100 bucks. But if you're wanting something, you know, one of their top lines, you're looking at four or $500. Uh, I made this for the cost of a sheet of plexiglass and Gorilla Tape. So 30 bucks, maybe, probably closer to 20 But yeah, that's some of the pros of this. I like having this over this. Now, I can't bring this all the time, obviously, but uh, if I'm taking a ruck, I'm taking this. I will find a reason to take this. You can put multiple uh, maps in here. You can put a map in the back also. So, like right here is a 1 by 25,000. If I wanted a larger area, I could put a 1 by 50 or even 1 by 100,000 if I wanted to. Put a couple maps in here, realistically, but uh, yeah, these are great. Um... Yeah, just a pain in the ass to store, really. But, yeah.
So that's what I want to talk about about map storage. It's uh, very important. Maps are important. Reading a map is important. Knowing how to read a map and use a map is important. But that's how you store them. Because if you're thinking you're just going to walk into the woods with a map and put it in your pocket, that's going to last until you start sweating. Because your sweat's going to get through your clothes and it's going to ruin your map. So you need some way to protect it, some way to read it, and effectively plot points. You don't want to be pulling your map out of your map case and plotting it with a pencil, then sticking it back in the map case every time. It's a pain. It's a pain. You want something you can write on on the outside, too. That's why the plexiglass is great. Now, the plexiglass is probably still going, if you don't erase it quick, to kind of leach in there. Um, just don't be an idiot like me. That's that simple. Just don't be an idiot like me. Keep a thing of hand sanitizer with you or one of the erasing um, uh, map markers, something. Uh, use permanent markers. Shouldn't have to be said. Don't use non-permanent because uh, it's non-permanent and you're going to sweat and it's going to bleed off, etc. So yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today, guys, is just how to store your maps. A couple ways I do it. They might not be the best ways for you, but they're the best ways for me. All right. Till next time. Talk to you guys later. Bye.